All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to a new day, a new session. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer. Uh, uh, Louis, uh, would you mind leading us in prayer, please? Okay, sir, good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, Father, we, we thank you for such an awesome day today. We thank you that we have come to the feet of thy altar to learn at the feet of the Most High. We pray that the words we will hear will lay a better foundation for the future of, of generations to come. We thank you that this words of oh God will not just be um, to our knowledge, but be a testimony of our faith in God. And therefore, we commit ourselves, our heart, our teacher into your hands, and we say for the Spirit to rest upon everyone's heart, that they may be established in this truth and all of His righteousness. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Louis. Amen. All right. So, yesterday we moved into chapter thirteen. We talked on leadership. <clears throat> Sorry. And some of the important points we saw was that uh, Jesus himself says, if the blind are leading the blind, they both are going to fall into a ditch. And so as leaders, it's very important that we be able to see the vision, to see, to, to have foresight uh, and to see where you want to have this organization or where do you want to see yourself standing uh, maybe three years, five years, 10 years down the line. And so we saw that uh, because leaders have the ability to influence other people, right? And so, uh, so we must have that, right? Uh, now, uh, we also looked at, you know, it doesn't mean we have to wait to become a CEO of a company and only then we can, you know, lead other people. No, we can be a leader in a cell group, right? With 10 people uh, and still, you know, uh, have this quality of being able to have foresight, of being able to, uh, you know, look ahead uh, uh, and look to the future. Uh, and it's very important because we remember that, you know, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they were all leaders, yet uh, they could not see that the Messiah was there. They were blind spiritually. Uh, and so it was like they were blind leaders and their followers also were blind and they both are just going to fall into a ditch. So it's very important as leaders that we uh, be able to see things ahead. And very important, it's also what we saw yesterday was, um, it's good to have a vision, it's, you know, it's good to write them down, pray over it, and all that is wonderful. But as leaders, we must maintain proper heart attitudes. And we looked at three heart attitudes, right? Uh, first one was servanthood. The second one was passion, and the third one was self-control. We see that the Lord Jesus, uh, being a leader, he chose to be a servant. He said, I have not come to be served, but I've come to serve the people, right? And this must be a heart of a leader, right? And we also saw that, you know, he, uh, uh, you know, during his time, he, he brought all the disciples, he washed their feet, he walked in humility, he did not do anything out of selfish ambition, right? And two, he had a passion. Uh, and as leaders, we must have passion. You know, yesterday we had a couple of questions as well on, uh, you know, how do I get my team members to be passionate about, you know, uh, some, you know, a goal or a vision that we have together. And so, as leaders, it is a responsibility. It is a task. It is. It does take time to, you know invest in people's life but one thing we can be assured of is like a leader has the ability to touch people's lives the leader has the ability to influence others lives so we must be passionate as leaders and three we looked at self-control and you know being self-governing being self-restrained uh, making the right decisions at the right time knowing how to speak when to speak uh, and i think in ministry as well a lot of uh, you know, a lot of times uh, there have been leaders who have gone onto the pulpit and maybe in certain conferences, they get excited. Uh, they say things that they shouldn't have said, right? Uh, and this loosely spoke, uh, spoke of things and uh, it backfired on them. Maybe they didn't really mean it, but in that excitement, in that, uh, you know, that being the center of attention, you got thousands of people listening to you, watching you, 
uh, and many times many preachers have said the wrong things uh, wrong words uh, you know they have a genuine heart they love the lord all of that but in that excitement they've said wrong things and then it's backfired on them so uh, as leaders we must also have the ability of self control right uh, uh, which also means you know because nobody's going to check on us as leaders nobody's going to say hey did you do this did you do that so uh, you know we must have the ability to check on our work check on our time check our habits our productivity our interactions with people so to make sure that you know uh, we're following the right heart attitudes and we also looked at maintaining uh, uh, you know proper people skills now any organization any ministry is about people right um it's not about robots ministry again it's not about robots and you know uh, just coming on the stage sharing and you know going away that is not what ministry is right uh, ministry is about people without the people there is no ministry without the people there is no organization right so as leaders we must develop people skills uh, what what do we mean by people skills uh, remember that they are people they're going through different challenges they all have a different story uh, you know how to relate with people how to communicate with people and these are uh, this is an attribute that we can develop over time right uh, uh, you know sometimes god chooses a leader uh and and he trains them during the process and there are times god trains people and then at a certain point of time makes them a leader so however it is as leaders we must have people skills being sensitive to people being uh you know uh, looking at their challenges being uh showing empathy sympathizing with them uh you no know, uh, giving them encouragement building them empowering them these are very important right uh, now especially in ministry it's very easy when you know when we have a small church uh, it can be a one man show right meaning okay the one person the pastor will do everything right uh, now that's okay for some time uh, but then later on it's going to be a burnout uh, we as leaders uh, must be willing to you know build teams trust people right and you know another important aspect of you know maintaining people skills is to trust people give them opportunities and trust them with that op opportunity right uh, so for example there's somebody in the church a young man he's been faithfully serving for a year give them some opportunity trust them with that opportunity i don't be going on asking oh did you do it are you of course there are ways of you know making sure that you know if he needs assistance we help him or her but uh, you know we need to trust people uh, and this all comes under people skills and then finally we looked at uh, if the head is not right the body is not right uh, uh, you know when we look at the uh, analogy of uh, of of the human body if the head is not functioning all right the body is not going to function all right so the head is where it sends the signals to our body right so we all woke up this morning and the head sends signals to the body saying okay you have a class at 9 and you got to log in so you did what you had to do to get into the class uh uh it's it, it the head helps you make decisions uh and also uh, to make the actions uh to, you know to fulfill the task that is ahead now head is not right the body won't be right you know we also saw you know um if you have a leader who's always you know mocking other religions or talking about other religions in a bad way the congregation will be doing the same thing if you have a leader who's gossiping about other you know pastors or other leaders you'll have a church full of gossipers if you have a leader who's always talking about you know uh, wealth and money and all of these things you will have a congregation who will always be 
you know, thinking of wealth and money and all of these things. Right? So it's very, very important that as a head, as a leader, we know how to portray ourselves. We need to make sure that, you know, it's a huge responsibility. Even if there are just five people, even if you're just a cell group leader, you know, next next semester, you uh, next year, you will look at, we will look at discipleship and small groups as well. And how important it is for leaders to, you know, uh, even if it's 10, 12 people, you are in, you and I are influencing them. Right. So as a head, we need to make sure we are right. So we stop there. We'll go to the next point. This is chapter 13 on leadership. Next point is demonstrate, emphasize, empower, and celebrate honesty. Uh, let's read Proverbs chapter 16, 12 and 13. Proverbs 16, 12 and 13. Yes, go ahead, please. Anyone? Proverbs 16, verses 12 and 13. Yes, anyone? Yes, Pastor. Proverbs 16, 12. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 12. It reads, Kings detest wrongdoing, for a throne is established through righteousness. Kings take pleasure in honest sleep, they value the one who speaks what is right. A king's wrath is a messenger of death, but the wise will appease it. When a king's face brightens, it means life. His favor is like rain cloud in spring. Yes. How Thank much you. better? Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Say. It's just uh, verses 12 and 13. Thank you. That's, oh, sorry about that. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So, Good leaders, I'm reading the message translation here, good leaders abhor wrongdoings, but sound leadership has a moral foundation. Good leaders cultivate honest speech. They love advisors who tell them the truth. Now, in a world that we are living in, honesty, integrity is very easily you know, thrown away. These are the core values that regular people have, that we must have, are all just, you know, put aside. Now, I'm not talking only in the corporate sector, but also in the ministry. Honesty, integrity, there are many, many ministries in so much of trouble, uh, in legal trouble, financial, the accounts don't match. And... They've got into trouble. Their cases are in the court. And then you've got integrity issues. You've got you know, leaders who have been involved in you know, adultery uh, with men and women. And these are all offensive in the eyes of God. That's why uh, the writer here, the message translation, used the right word. Good leaders abhor. The word abhor is to... Uh, Come to have a uh, you know extreme hatredness to something, right? And in a world that we live in, being honest is quite risky, right? Uh, others may say, strike back and say, okay, why do you have to do this? Uh, you know, leaders uh, uh, must protect people. Uh, we must, we as leaders, we must make sure that those who are honest are protected. Uh, we must make sure that those who are honest are are empowered even more. But people can, you know, uh, leave honesty and integrity at the doorstep and do everything that is evil in the eyes of God. Never let honest people feel vulnerable or feel punished for their choice of honesty. There will be times in let me just translate this in ministry right 
there will be times in your church or in your team, a group, hopefully not, but I'm, I'm just saying there'll be times when, you know, there could be a season where there's this feeling of, you know, uh, dishonesty that's happening. Or, or, or you feel that there's something wrong within the church. Uh, and then we find out that there was some dishonest means used or there were the integrity issues among some of the church members. What must we do? Yes, we must bring correction. But there will be these few people in the church who stand for the truth, who say, no, no, I don't want to involve myself in dishonest ways or or in walking in, uh, you know, without walking in integrity. Now, those are the people we must protect. Those are the people we must empower, right? It's not always about talents and skills, right? We look at hard attitudes, right? Talents and skills are a part of, uh, you know, God's calling in our life. God calls us, he gives us these talents and skills. But above that, our attitudes, right? Uh, some people in the organization will hate you for your honesty. Uh, you know, they'll say, hey, this guy, no, no, he's you know, he's not a good person. Uh, um, I mean, he, he's not going to involve with us because I, we know something about him. Right? Uh, and uh, then there will be some who will stand against you. They will say, you know, uh, he's the one who did wrong, but he's put the blame on somebody else. And uh, all of this will happen in the, in, in, what, in the corporate and in the ministry. But remember that, that there will be some who will stand with you because you are honest. Stay honest always. Right, uh, Proverbs seventeen twenty six right, says, "It is not right to make an innocent person pay a fine. Justice is perverted when good people are punished." Right, so honesty and integrity are very high values, and when we see that in our team, when we see that in our uh, team members as leaders, we need to empower them. We need to uh, em empower their honesty, celebrate their lives thank them for being honest right and and it builds a whole lot of you know uh, trust and faith in them and we'll begin to see that hey other people in the team also you know there will be times you know uh, in ministry uh like for example even me i uh, so i've been in apc for quite some time there are times when you know we we feel tired we feel weary we uh, you know uh, but it's th the best thing to do is to be honest Right. There are times I've gone up to, uh, you know, our leaders, uh, senior pastors, uh, and you know, senior uh, le leaders as well, and I've told them, you know, I feel tired. Uh, there's no pretense, right? We can't pretend to be something. They, they ask me, hey, uh, can you do this thing? Can you do, get this job done? There are times I've said, no, I can't. I'm just feeling very tired, and you know, we don't give excuses or say lies, and you know, be dishonest or. No, just, just be honest. And when you're honest, people begin to trust you even more. Right? Uh, I remember there was this one time, this uh, man uh, was part of our volunteer team. This happened in another place. Uh, and uh, I asked him, uh, oh, brother, can we go and visit this family? Uh, because they, are, you know, they lost their loved one. Can we go and visit their family? He said, yes, yes, pastor. And then uh, we decided a time and a date. And he said, OK. And then even in the morning, I called him and said, OK, so today is the date we will go. And somewhere in the afternoon, he says, actually, you know, I'm not feeling too well now, so I can't come. I said, OK, it's all right. OK, I'll go alone. Uh, so he, so I went alone. But uh, later on in the evening, uh, as I was talking to him, I found out that the only reason he couldn't come was because, you know, the transport uh, for picking up his child from school, uh, you know, that person was unwell. So the bus driver, or the auto person was not available to go pick up the child. Uh, uh, you know, but he told me that I'm not feeling well, so I can't come. 
Now, what happens is all he could have said was, you know, hey, this is what's happened. Uh, you know, the transport guy hasn't been able to come, so I have to go pick up my child. It's a genuine reason, right? The child can't come alone, can't come return back home alone. Uh, but what happens is it becomes when we don't be honest, uh, you know, it, it becomes a habit. And we tend to live a life of dishonesty. And that is not right in the eyes of God. And then once we become leaders, or if we are already in leadership role, we'll try to implement this. You know, the enemy has his ways of bringing all these wrong, hard attitudes, wrong attitudes, wrong thoughts, wrong uh, dealings with people. Uh, just because you get away with one thing at one time doesn't mean that, you know, every time we can do the same thing. It's it's a it's a it's wrong in the eyes of God. So we must remember that. Next point, your attitude wrecks on or invigorates. People tolerate or celebrate your attitude. Now, uh, I'll just read Proverbs 16, 14 and 15. An intemperate, intemperate leader wrecks havoc in lives. You're smart to stay clear of someone like that. Good tempered leaders invigorate lives. They're like spring and rain and sunshine. Now, attitude is something that is quickly noticeable. You know, we say, you know, uh, hey, this guy has an attitude problem. Uh, I'm sure we've all used that uh, when we were young. Uh, you know, he's got an attitude problem, so I don't feel comfortable talking to him. You know, maybe because he's too rich or maybe because this boy is too talented, so he's got an attitude problem. Maybe because he's very good in his studies and no, he's got an attitude problem. Attitude is very quickly noticeable. Right? Our attitude affects whether you like it, others, uh, you know, it, it, it affects others and others decide whether they like it or not. Right? Our attitude can dampen other people's life, kill other people's spirit, or it can refresh and inspire us. You know, I've heard this saying, right? Uh, our attitude will determine our altitude in life, right? Imagine this, we grow up the ladder, corporate sector, ministry, anywhere. We're growing up the ladder. God is opening doors. We're growing, we're growing, we're growing. It's because we have good skills. We've been working hard. Uh, you know, now we're growing up the ladder. And at one point of time, you'll reach a position a high position. So professionally, we have done well. But on this journey of moving up, if our attitude also has not changed, what happens is we climb up the ladder and then because of our attitude, we can just slip that one step on the ladder and fall bottom down, right to the ground, right? Our skills and talents take up up the ladder, but it's our attitude that keeps us there. Right? Uh, yes, it's always good to you know uh, have an attitude that is always joyful, pleasant, uh, and we understand that there are times you know we can't be always pleasant and always happy, but. Uh, we must not have a bad attitude, right? Uh, and we have a choice. If we are a leader, how we can portray ourselves? How must our attitude be? Are we short-tempered? Are we people who you know, get upset quickly? Or do we get uh, irritated very quickly? Are we always you know, uh, in a hurry to do something? Um, are our words, you know, offensive to people, all these things people notice. You know, there's also the aspect of, uh, you know, physical, uh, you know, the way we, uh, there's a lot of study on how, you know, uh, especially in counseling, we study some, you know, pointers where you know, physical uh, attire, a physical way of, you know, in, even in our, uh, you know, physical attributes, people can make out our, our, our attitude. So it's very important to have the right attitude. Uh, celebrate people who have the good attitude. 
draw inspiration and encouragement stay positive and have a great attitude so this attitude will quickly rub off on others right uh, remember that as we grow up the ladder it could be because of our talents and skills and god opens doors but there's this responsibility of mending our attitude changing the way we you know maybe speak or the way we deal with our team members the way we deal with our team we need to be uh, you know having positive and great attitudes next one very important as leaders be real down to earth and avoid pretense proverbs 13:7 says a pretentious showy life is an empty life uh, a, a plain and simple life is full of life right uh, proverbs 12:9 says better to be ordinary and work for a living than act important and starve in the process right so proverbs is so wonderful he you know, solomon just touches every aspect here he's saying be real be down to earth right uh when ministries are small it's very easy to be real it's very easy to be down to earth if you're starting a business it's very easy right uh, when you start something small it's very easy to be uh, you know down to earth be real be yourself but what happens as we grow as the ministries grow and then you know people or uh, you know even organizations as they grow we start coming on youtube and then people start inviting you why don't you come to this church and play a song or why don't you come to this church and preach and then people start to invite you and then what happens all of a sudden that down to earth feeling goes away why because there's importance where there's importance given people turn you know they start saying hey it's because of me people are inviting me to come and preach in so many places people are inviting me to come and you know sing the songs i'm a songwriter so many people are coming calling me now what happens is it becomes a show business now remember this very important leadership is not show business jesus in his ministry nowhere did he portray ministry as something that is very you know uh, superficial or very great nowhere he was just simple he was a simple man you know um, nowhere does it say that okay jesus now he had 10000 15000 people listening to him so he started wearing you know some nice ornaments and perfumes and uh, you know wearing very wealthy clothing of linen and no where does it say that jesus got up in the morning he wore his regular clothes he went out with his regular people he didn't say to the disciples hey you are all fishermen and car and you know tax collectors for some time don't be near me let me go do my and anyway, we have got about 15 20000 people who are listening to me i'll still do the healings i'll still do the miracles i don't want to be seen with you guys you know you all are just ordinary fishermen nowhere in her did jesus do that but here's the thing don't put ourselves on the pedestal pedestal we must be accessible we must be approachable be normal as leaders you know this is very sad to i'm very you know when we look at what's happening around us uh, you know pastors and leaders uh they're not normal it's very sad to say uh, you know it's okay to laugh it's okay to cry it's okay to you know remember that we are real normal people right uh, uh people will know that they uh, that they can do what you do uh because of what you are you know one of the things that i always do uh with my children and this is something you know that i i've learned over the past year or so you know is as as my son he's about 6 years old he always sees me in the church he always sees me you know leading worship uh praying for people preaching uh and 
and as past as children sometimes people have a lot of expectations right? you should know this you should know that you should know the whole of uh, the bible by the time you're 10 years old and these are uh, you know uh, wrong expectations but some of the things that i do is you know it's very important that he learns that you know i'm not perfect so i keep at times you know when i when i get upset or uh, you know I, i tell him you know these are things that you should not do um uh, and then i i go and we have this heart to heart talk i i sit with him and i tell him i apologize and i say i'm sorry and for him it's a big deal i right? know uh, dad dad why are you apologizing to me you know for him it's like oh everyone come and pray to you pray for you and you know they 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 have so much of reverence for you you know in the church everyone say come uh, pastor please come please sit you know he's seen all of that at a young age and so he always feels that you know that uh, uh, you know my dad is somebody who's very great and you know he he feels that way uh, uh but i i keep telling him you know i make the same i make mistakes so sometimes you know when uh uh if if there's you know i'm upset and i shout at him uh i i call him and i tell i apologize and i say i'm sorry i shouldn't have done that and and then i bring in scriptures and i say okay this is what the bible says and so uh i did something wrong the reason i got upset was because uh you know i had mentioned this not to do this and so now you know over the past 6 months he understands that i'm just a normal person right so i i keep telling him i also make mistakes i but what i do is i still love the lord i still go out to god and i pray and ask forgiveness and so now he's more open to me he tells me everything right there are you know when when we, i tell him you know at times don't download these games you know there are some games which are not right uh earlier i used to say don't download don't download but i realized that i i shouldn't be saying don't i need to replace it with something else and so i began to talk to him through the scriptures uh you know so what i'm trying to say is sometimes we as leaders we think we are invincible meaning we know everything and we are always right uh but there's beauty in humility there's beauty in simplicity right just being simple just letting people know that you're a normal person you know uh even now uh when i apologize to him when i when i tell him you know can i talk to you later he's only 6 years old uh but what's happening is he's understanding hey even dad is he's a normal person right of course people call him he's going he's preaching and he's doing all these things praying for people and uh you know but he's a normal person and so he can approach me at any time he can uh, if he has any problems he can approach me he can talk to me uh and so it's very important now there are there's this meeting or this huge conference that happened in 2000 I think it was 2014 it was called Vision India conference it is a huge conference so you got maybe about 15000 odd people coming into one of the cities in India in the center of delhi uh, and and you got thousands of uh, you know youth coming there and it was a big auditorium so we were you know as volunteers i was part of the hospitality team right so when the when the preachers come in so we take them to the green room offer them tea biscuits make sure that they are comfortable let them know the what's the agenda when they go on stage when they come off stage so i was really excited i was young we were in delhi and i was so surprised these are very famous people all right i don't want to use any names but they're very very famous everyone know them in, especially in our nation and the demands that they had was I was quite astonished. I was surprised. Uh, one of the preachers said, uh, "I will not get into this car from the airport. Right? I will not get into this car unless you send a car which has AC. Send me a better car. I'm not going to get into this car. I'm not talking about, you know, uh, some uh, something that uh, we see once in a while. These are, you know." great leaders 
been in the ministry for a long time. And there was this one, and he he refused to sit in the car, so we had to send another car. And then there was this other leader, uh, great, right, uh, very famous. They came into the green room, and he was visibly upset. So we asked him, "What happened? Is everything all right?" No, oh, the the what kind of room have you all booked for me? I expected to stay in a better five star hotel, but you just booked a room which was, you know, some regular hotel. There's no swimming pool in the hotel. This was his requirement. He wanted a swimming pool in the hotel. And uh, but then when they go on stage, oh, thank you, Jesus, you glory to God, and all of those things. And I was watching. I'm in the green room, and then from the green room, you can just go uh, just a small walk away, and you get to the main stage. So upset because of you know no AC car, no AC room, or no swimming pool. But when they get on the stage, they are completely different. Another preacher came and said, uh, "What kind of food is this? Right, uh, this? This food? This is not. Is this the food you give people like us? Uh, you know, just it was. It was such a show. I was so surprised. I, I wanted to ask them, are we together building God's kingdom, or is this like a? Uh, I don't know. You know, I, I was so." broken and i thought to myself i would never ever no matter how big or small i am should never do this and i'm glad i learned that lesson uh, but there was this other preacher very famous preacher right he came in very humbly he sat I said, you know, I remember, I said, can I get you a cup of tea? No, brother, no, brother. Right. I, anyways, I got him some refreshments. He sat there. Then he, everyone were talking and laughing. It's, you know, uh, he went, to, uh, can I get some silence in a small room? He asked me. I said, yes, pastor, please go here. And, and I saw, and I just peeped in, and I saw he was kneeling and praying. And then he went on the stage. He preached in his regional language, and there was a translator who preached in Hindi. The entire stadium was weeping in tears as he was preaching the word of God. This is 2014, Vision India. The entire stadium, the youth, the youth, young people crying and weeping. He's just preaching the word. He finished preaching. There's no show, there's no gimmicks, nothing. Just the word of God. He preached. He wasn't even wearing a suit and, or, you know, just a simple man, but very famous. He got off the stage. He said, brother, can I have a glass of water? I gave him a bottle of water. And I said, please wait. The car will come, take you and drop you to the hotel. He said, it's all right. Don't worry about the car. If you just go to the main road, there's an auto. I know the name of the hotel. I'll sit in the auto and go. I said, no, you can't do that. We, we have a car. Just wait for a few minutes. He said, don't worry about it. You're all tired. Uh, I will take an auto. It's just close by. He went. He went to the main road. He caught an auto himself, sat in the auto and went. Now, which was more effective? The others came in with all the pomp and all the show, with all their complaints. They did something on the stage and went away. This man came in humility and simplicity preached the word, the Holy Spirit touched people's lives, just went back home quietly. No demands, no, no nothing. When we are real, when we are down to earth, when there's no pretense, the Holy Spirit begins to work very powerfully in us. right? Because as leaders, we are very easily you know, distracted, very, very easily gone, you know, we may be taken away into this whole thing of fame and, uh, you know, uh, and ministry becomes a business. Heard of many, uh, another evangelist a long time back. He said, unless you give me 1.5 lakhs, I'm not going to come and preach. And this was a small, probably two, three churches coming together. And, you know, it, it's sad to see these demands, but, uh, it's very important that we stay down to earth, be simple, uh, be careful of familiarity, 
uh, you know, uh, and our words, our, the way we walk in our life is very important, right? Next point, lead by example. And we looked at these uh, be sorry i think my internet just dropped yeah nehemiah yes. uh, yeah is, is it okay you. yeah is it we okay now? no it's okay all right all right yeah so nehemiah chose voluntary to stay away from uh you know enjoying the privileges of being a governor but he you know he led by example he put his hands to the plow you know our life example speaks the most i'm sure all of us have heard this right where we uh, you know, we can preach a thousand sermons, but uh, what they will remember is what we do. Right? Uh, one of the things I do remember is uh, you know, there was this one time we, we were at a conference and uh, at that conference, uh, uh, you know, as leaders, we were trained that, you know, after eating, you wash your own plate. So uh, we not regularly ate. We just washed our plates and we kept it aside. Then we went to, on the pulpit, we began to share and teach and all of that. But the young people saw that and they said, one of the things we've noticed in your team is you all took the plate, stood in the own, your own line. You know, during the end of the conference, they say, what did you learn from these three days of sessions? And so the youth came and said, one thing that I learned was you all as leaders took your plates, stood in the line, took your own food, washed your plates and kept it there. Now, we did sessions on all kinds of, you know, Holy Spirit and, uh, you know, uh, uh, faith, hope, all these wonderful scriptures we thought about. But they remembered this. Right? So as leaders, we need to lead by example. What we do speaks the loudest. Right? Uh, uh, next one. Uh, give honest feedback, right? There'll be times as leaders, we have to give feedback, right? Uh, especially if somebody is, you know, uh, sharing the word for the first time or even worship leading for the first time. Uh, you know, give honest feedback. If you feel they were good, tell them they were good. If you feel that there's, you know, much more scope for improvement, there are places where they need to improve, give them honest feedback. That honest feedback is something that, uh, as leaders, we must give, right? Uh, people will eventually know that you did it for their good. At that moment, they may not, they may feel bad, uh, or, or some of them who are matured will say, okay, yes, I want to improve on this. Uh, but remember that uh, they will understand one day that the feedback that I received was for my good. And uh, But listen, correction and feedback has to be timely. Uh, you know, give it uh, when you notice it or shortly thereafter, right? Meaning, uh, don't wait for, you know, you know what happened? Six months back, you led the worship and you said this thing and the way you said it was not right. No, don't wait for six months to give that feedback. Give it on Monday. If it was on Sunday, give it on Monday. Or give it a day uh, later. But the notice period should be very short. Uh, um, and then... In timely feedback, also, uh, the, you know, don't don't choose a time and a place. Where, you know, if somebody uh, does something wrong, or you feel that you want to give them feedback, don't you know when the cell group is happening, don't say, okay, you know what, I wanted to give you feedback in front of all of them, giving the feedback. Again, that is not the right time, not the right place. Right? There's a way, and I'm sure that all of us have developed that ability as well. Uh, next point: Don't waste your words on the inattentive there will be times you're giving corrections uh there will be times when people will you know say okay i want to uh, uh you know you're giving them corrections but you see that there's no effort from their side they're just going on with the same thing don't waste your words on them if you see that they're not implementing the feedback that they're giving you just move on right christopher has got a question besides travel accommodation do pastors typically in india charge for preaching a sermon at an event yes uh yeah christopher mostly they do uh now 
I wouldn't say all pastors now, especially evangelists, right? Uh, you know, uh, evangelists, people who've got uh, or worship, uh, you know, singers. Now, again, I, I, I'm not saying that all of them are, you know, uh, asking for money and all of that. Uh, there are some who don't ask for money, very genuinely serve the Lord. And they trust God that God will, you know, bless them. Uh, but from what I know, right, um, especially if they're like, you know, uh, famous, uh, they're people who are, you know, uh, they are on YouTube or their songs are very famous and you invite them, they do ask for a certain kind of remuneration. If they don't ask, it's good, you know, uh, the, the, the church or ministry that's inviting the person, it'll be good to bless them with something. Uh, yeah, so... Nine out of ten times they do ask. Yeah. So, right. All right. So, yes. Say, go ahead. So, um, just to kind of um, put a balance, would you would you say that um, even though they charge, the manner and the way it's done should still be done in a humble, you know, not it shouldn't be done with the motive that oh. They can minister without being paid, but from the standpoint that uh, they have people, they have to pay, they have to, and from a, a point of humility, basically, would you put that balance in the way they should um, yes. approach such? Yeah. Yes. So, for example, uh, if you have somebody who's in the ministry who's, you know, probably written a couple of songs and they've, you know, their songs have become famous and they've been invited for different places. We know that that is their only source of income, right? Uh, they're in the ministry. Uh, so we must also, you know, understand where they are coming from. Now, they're still not yet very much established. Uh, but there are some, some uh, you know, uh, pastors or uh, or evangelists, especially evangelists, they 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 don't really ask for money, right? Uh, it's not like I'm I, only if you pay me, I'll come. Uh, but what I'm saying, what I'm trying to say is that um, yes, there should be that balance, even when if they ask. Uh, you know, in in ministry, it's very difficult to say, right? You know, you pay me this much and I'll come and preach. Uh, it's so wrong to do that. Uh, but you know, we, we must understand, uh, like, so for example, if I'm inviting somebody, uh, I would ask them, uh, is there a charge? Do you, would you, do you usually, you know, have certain amount of remuneration for this? Or sometimes, uh, you know, uh, yeah, Christopher's put here, do attendees pay for a ticket to attend the event? Uh, it all depends, Christopher. So, so before that, let me just finish Say's question. Uh, so it really depends on, you know how big the ministry is like for like for example apc we don't you know we don't like to charge for anything we try to do everything on our own we try to you know even when we go out on outreaches mission trip we do everything on our own in fact we try to bless the other ministries who are uh, but there are many ministries like that so there are times when you know we must understand that they, there's a need for them as well uh and so we can choose to bless them uh but there's a way yeah as you said say there's a way of you know asking and there's a way of uh dealing things uh, uh it shouldn't be like out of pride and you know you know what i'm like this so until you pay me this uh i'll not come those are the wrong ways to deal with it but it's always good to bless uh, those who are serving the lord uh chris uh, for an event do attendees pay for a ticket to attend the event uh for the Vision India conference, uh, or uh, you know, there are many other conferences. There will be times when there there could be a registration charge, uh, like a very minimal registration charge. Yes, uh, or there could be times there's no, you know, now if you got it in your church, obviously we're not going to charge our own church members to uh, come and be part of an event, right? It's going to, it won't look right. But if you're doing something like a separate evangelistic event or a youth concert, uh, you can think of, you know, having a minimal charge. Now, those charges are, it's only so that we can meet the needs, uh, you know, maybe renting the hall or renting sound equipment, all of that. So, right. Uh, okay, so we've uh, come 
uh, to the end of our time. Okay, we'll just have probably two more points. What we'll do is we'll finish this next week and then we'll get into our next chapter as well. All right, uh, let's just quickly close in prayer. Uh, Rupa, is it okay if you can close for us? Sure, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Father God, we come to your awesome presence. Thank you, Lord, for being with us and teaching us your heart. Father, as you have called us to serve you, Lord God, grant us your heart. Father, heart of humility and to serve you in all that we do and say, Master, let people see a great revival in the children of God, in the leaders of God, that we may serve you with wholehearted commitment and surrender, Lord God. We thank and praise you for giving us this privilege to be called the servants of the Most High God, that you honor us, you have honored us, and given us this privilege. And Father, grant a thank you for Pastor Paul and his family serving you, Lord God. We all need more of you in our lives, more of your presence, anointing, wisdom, understanding, and change of heart, renewal of heart, mind, and Father God, and our thought processes as we serve you, Lord, that we may reflect your glory in jesus name amen 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 thank you rupa thank you everyone uh thank you, for joining have a great week ahead we'll see you next week god bless thank you pastor god bless thank you pastor, god bless. Thank you, pastor.